you had Alert 30, you had to be able to get out of your shop into the helicopter on the flight deck in 30 minutes to take off to arrest you somebody. So our shop was directly below the tower on the um, starboard side of the ship. And so right across the hallway from the CO's birthing. And so we would come out and then there would, we would be outside and then we'd come up and there was the flight deck. So the night President Bush came and landed on the ship, the CO gave him his birthing. And he, so he was, he was sleeping in the CO's birthing with his two um, Secret Service guys out front. And we had six hours till we landed or we pulled into port. Mm -hmm. And we were cleaning our shop out and we got all entire shop out and we got it on the flight deck and we start to move it, and the Secret Service guys come out and said, you need to stop what you're doing. The president's sleeping, and you're gonna wake him up and you're being too loud. So you need to stop what you're doing until he wakes up, and then you can continue to clean out your shop. And we hadn't even got to our racks yet, so we hadn't even packed our own stuff to go home. We were still stuck doing the shop. And so it was, it was just one of those moments where, but we picked the stuff up yeah. and we carried it and we carried it all the way across the flight deck and put it on the, the hangar bay door or the, the elevator to take it down to the hangar bay. And I'll never forget that because we had to stop because the president needed to sleep. I did 10 <laughs> months on a boat, four months without land because I was doing my job and I'm six hours from going home and I had to stop. It was, and I had done 18 months at war and I had only had a, a month left in the Navy. And I had done my time, I I'd, I'd done everything. I was get, going to get out and I had a job and I had a, a wife at the time who is now my ex-wife and who was pregnant with my son. And I was driving home on I-5 and I was in the back seat sleeping of a Jeep Grand Cherokee and it rolled four times on the freeway and my seat belt broke and I was ejected out the back window. So I have no filling in my stomach here because of where the seatbelt was and my sh collarbone is not attached to my shoulder so I have to actually put it back into place which is tough for rowing but um, because I it jammed my shoulder down to get out of the car. Yeah, no, so my collarbone is actually, it was attached by bone chunk and ligaments mm -hmm. and then I was doing some snowboarding and I wrecked and I completely I finished pulling it, the collarbone off. So the collarbone's here, and you can actually see oh, the wow. collarbone, right? So then it's, if I go like this, I can put it back into place, right? So, and then I row, and, and so I have to, it's a, it's a good muscle workout. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, so that's, I, I broke my spine at T10, T12 to L1, and I'm fused at T10 to L3. I have 17 screws in my spine, an inch and a half of bone chunk, 17 screws and a metal rod on each side of my spine. And I stayed four months in the Seattle VA hospital and in 2005. And when I left there, I was told I'd never walk again. And I'm 100% retired Navy, disabled retired Navy, and I'm, I'm a paraplegic. I have no control of anything below my knees. I'm getting, I have very limited control of my quad muscles. And I mean, I can break it down like my glutes, my right side, I can kind of flex my, so I, I'm getting some motion and muscle control back, but it's, I, it's more, I'm really good at catching myself when I fall basically. And so there's not a lot of explosion where I can lift, mm -hmm. but I put back down and it's my balance is the biggest issue but I can't move my toes can't move my ankles um, can't control my calves my shins uh, and when I row and, and I row at full speed my knees lock and I don't have the ability to flex my quad muscles to unlock my knees and so and then I got nerve issues nerve pain nerve nerve everything spasming and I'd done my time and I'd been through a year and a half of training. I'd been two, uh, done two cruises and a build up on the Reagan. And then I had done my five years. And well, I was almost done with my five right. years. You're and, still technically the same, yeah, but you're on leave. Yeah. And I was on my way home, driving home. And I just didn't, I didn't make it. And so when I got home, so I, when I got into the VA hospital, they extended my enlistment so that I would be in the Navy until I got out of the hospital and they could diagnose me. And then I got out of the hospital in December of 05, and by January of 06, I was retired Navy. I moved to the center to live with my grandparents because they had a handicap accessible house already. Mm -hmm. And I'm from the center. And like I said, Coach Lambert was 
other than family, Coach Lambert was the biggest help to me at that time. Um, but my family, my grandparents took care of me, basically, my grandma, and then just allowed me to get stronger. And I just, I was really dedicated, and the Navy taught me how to push my, rescue, being a rescue swimmer and going through all that, I learned how to push myself, and that even if I didn't have it, I, I, I didn't think I had more, I did. Um, so I just learned to push myself till the pain was too much, and, and I just slowly, and then I learned about recovery and how important it is to let your body heal after you push it. And once I, I found a balance, I just, I started moving longer, staying on my feet longer. Um, actually, and even I'm still getting better today because I found that during baseball season, at the beginning of baseball season, I would do JV practice and I would be tired. Mm -hmm. I would be sitting on the bench for the varsity games. And so by the end of the season, I was, coaching the JV team, standing up for the varsity games, and still getting home and doing stuff with my wife and my daughter. Because mm -hmm. that's really important to me too, was when I started to walk, my goals were just to stand up and play catch with my son and teach him how to throw and be able to not be in my wheelchair and, and have to go and do that type of stuff. And, and now that I'm older, I think about it, and guys that are, have, and people that have to do that type of thing, I, I, it, it's just tough. And it's not, I just wanted to make things easier and be able to be like everybody else. And I, like I said, mechanics wise, I believe that I'm a lefty. So I believe if you line up the inside seam of your foot, whether you're a pitcher or a quarterback, or if you're golfing, so I like to golf too, right? And so I believe that aiming, you're, you, you control your hips and your torso with the inside of your foot. So I can move around and I can do all this stuff and I can lift because of, the, I mean, it's not really control, but how tight my nerves are and how tight everything is, is I, and I can still balance and then lift, and then it's all about landing. And I practice so much at doing this to this motion that I just, it's gracefully falling and I catch myself. <laughs> and so that's, that's how I feel sometimes. And so when I was in the Navy, I pitched for the all Navy baseball team until I went to war. And I could throw, the coach said I got, I topped out at 88, mm -hmm. high 80s. And, and as I've gotten, uh, as I became a coach and I've gotten more into coaching, I learned mechanics of a pitcher. And this is how you're, you lift your arms. Mm -hmm. This is how you should hold it. So my arm motion has gotten better. And I've gotten stronger and um, more precise with my pitches. And so I don't, I can... I can stand still and throw hard and still hit a spot. And so when I can, if I can line up my, my back foot, no matter, it doesn't really matter where this lands because of my, my ability to throw straight with my arm. 2009, I went, to, I went to Aspen with the Disabled Veterans Winter Sports Clinic. The VA mm -hmm. takes veterans to the Winter Sports Clinic, to Aspen to teach them how to do sit down skiing, um, sled hockey and that type of stuff. And in the mess hall, they had an erg machine or indoor rowing machine, mm -hmm. and they just wanted anybody to come try it, see how fast you would go. The person who had the fastest time over, uh, I think it was two minutes, he won a shirt. And so I, I was really competitive. I was 25 when it happened. I, I won the shirt, I got, and I got the fastest time. And I got a phone call like an hour later from the, the US military's Paralympic program asking me to come to Fort Lewis to do some winter sports. And so I went to Fort Lewis, I tried sit down volleyball, I tried uh, like uh, adaptive shot put and some track stuff and adaptive swimming and then I found rowing. And I got on a rowboat and it was the closest thing to flying that I had experienced since being in, out of a helicopter. And at that time, I still remembered, it was really fresh in my mind what it was to walk compared to not, I just gotten hurt. Um, I was just starting to recover, and so I really fell in love with rowing instantly.